In this video, we'll talk about how to find a basis for the null space of a matrix. The process is actually something that you are already familiar with. Remember that the null space of a matrix A are the vectors x such that A times x is the zero vector. So if I want to find those vectors, I would need to solve the matrix equation A times x equals zero. And to do that, normally we make the augmented matrix A augmented with the zero vector, but what we learned last time is we don't really need to include that augmented part. So your first step is to row reduce A to find the solution to the matrix equation A times X equals the zero vector. Then you write the solution in parametric vector form. Once you have your solution in parametric vector form, you can write your solution as a span of vectors. Now those vectors will be the basis for the null space of A. So let's look at this example. So in this example, we have the matrix A with entries 1, 0, negative 3, 1, 3, negative 1, 1, 5, 0, negative 5, 0, 2, 4, 1, negative 6. And we're asked to find a basis for the null space of A. First, we're going to row reduce A. I won't go through the details, but the matrix you should get is the following. You should get 1, 0, negative 3, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, negative 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2. Once it's in reduced row echelon form, you're ready to write your solution in parametric vector form. First, we see that we have three basic variables. x1, x2, and x4 are basic. And we have two free variables, x3 and x5. To write our solution in parametric vector form, we need to write the basic variables in terms of the free variables. So I want to look at each row of this matrix and write the corresponding equation. So here we have x1 minus 3x3 plus x5. Now normally we would have the augmented column of zeros, but we just keep that in mind and say that this is equal to zero. Second row, we have x2 plus 2x3 minus 4x5 equals zero. And lastly, I have x4 plus 2x5 equals 0. So our solution is x equals x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. I can replace all of the basic variables in terms of free variables. So for x1, I can write this as 3x3 minus x5. x2, I can write as minus 2x3 plus 4x5. x3 is free, so I'm just going to write down x3. x4 is negative 2x5. And then lastly, x5 is free, so I just write down x5. Separating the vectors and factoring out the free variables, I get that this is x3 times 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, plus x5 times negative 1, 4, 0, negative 2, 1. Once we have our solution in parametric vector form, we can see that the null space of A is equal to the span of the vectors 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, 4, 0, negative 2, 1. So the set 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, 4, 0, negative 2, 1 is a basis for the null space of A. So you might wonder why this process always gives a basis for null space of A. You will always have linearly independent vectors because of how these vectors are formed. To get our first vector, we separated the terms that have x3s in them. To get our second vector, we separated the terms that have x5s in them. For the vector associated with the free variable x3, notice that in the third component, I have a 1 there, but then a 0 in all of the other vectors in that component. So this tells me that the x3 vector cannot be written as a linear combination of all the other vectors. Similarly, we can look at the fifth component of the x5 vector. We have a 1 in this entry, but then in the other vectors, you have a 0. So the vector associated with x5 cannot be written as a linear combination of any other vector. 
So since none of the vectors can be written as a linear combination of the others, we have a linearly independent set. And since this set spans my null space, it forms a basis. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll look at how to find a basis for the column space.